Eric, you ready? Let's go. <clears throat> So welcome back. This is season 2 of Off the Pitch and it's been a busy entertaining season and we're very happy that one of the main standout characters, new characters in the ISL has agreed to speak with us. It's a fantastic start for Northeast United and especially for one Pedro Benali who's trying to change things, turn them into a more united Northeast. Coach, we we stalked you a little bit on social media. And we went back to some of your posts, some of your tweets to find out what moves you. And, and, and we figure that Burt Reynolds is, is one of your favorites from, from the 70s, an actor. And Burt Reynolds was starring in this show called Evening Shade, in which uh, he returns to a rural town and he tries to make a team start winning after a losing streak. Yeah, I remember that. But can win, great potential. Does it sound familiar? Well, <laughs> it sounds familiar. I, I, I passed many, many towns, you know. Uh, Guwahati, Northeast, is another town, but it's a great town. It's a fantastic town. Uh, and, and, and I hope uh, uh, the result would be better than with, with Bart Reynolds. Yeah, it sounds, it sounds very familiar, you know. When you're starting, uh, especially coming from a very bad season before, uh, everything is new. Everything is you need to organize absolutely everything. But slowly, slowly, I hope uh, it doesn't take me too much like Bart Reynolds, and and the result will come and we'll be more happy than <laughs> less chaos. You have had an illustrious. Uh career one and had multiple different roles in football overseen some big academies back and forth as a manager um after all that experience i mean you know why now why come to the northeast uh, at this point in time what enticed you well i had offers from india for the last three years we can say uh i was not really ready to to, to come but uh i had uh, contact with uh, John Abraham and Mandar, and we had some interviews and we spoke. Uh, and really, the two persons influenced me so much that, that I said, this is the people I need to work with. This is the place I want to go. You know, I start reading about the region, Northeast region, uh, the diversity, diversity we, can, we can say they have here. And it's me. It's me. And I feel, I feel great here. When you say it's you, coach, uh, why do you say that? Because I've been, you know, I, I was born in Africa, you know, I'm Spanish. I was born in Sahara when the Sahara was was Spanish. My father was a military. And uh, we've been traveling all over the world. We've been, you know, every six, seven months we change place, uh, knowing a lot of people. Then when I start my career as, as a coach, I've been in different continents, different countries, traveling all around, uh, get married with, with uh, women who not my nationality also. And that makes me feel that I need to be with different people, with people from everywhere, you know. I feel I'm from everywhere. I'm not Spanish only. You know, you know when you first arrived in the Northeast, uh, what was the first three or four changes that you, you had to make at the club? Well, the most important thing was... The- for example, last season the players, the Indian players were living some somewhere else. The uh, foreigners were some living other apartments. We said no, it's impossible. This is a team. This is a family. Everybody lives in the same apartment. Same. Everybody is the same. There's no difference between local and foreigners. It's one team. It's northeast, and everybody lives the same. Second point was uh, training field. Uh, we need a good training field with train because. Uh, tomorrow, everybody's asking why you don't play very well. It's normal. And uh, really, the, the administration team worked very, very hard. 
they did they did it and uh, the, the the third most important point is to start from zero to clean the dressing room and to start from zero that's uh, building slowly slowly trying to understand uh, football in the end not only play football is to understand what's going on why we do the things uh, the players before training we explain with videos and everything in different languages because uh, that's one uh, very important thing. It's sometimes we say, "Oh, they don't understand me." I don't know. It's your communication. Maybe is not the right one. You know. In the end, we try that everybody understands very well. Everybody talks. There's no difference between one and the other. Uh, if we don't understand it, we still on it till we understand the training, and then when we go to the field, we have no time to lose. Straight away, everybody is is ready, and the time is if we train it one and a half, one and a half hours exactly one and a half hour. So, yeah, I had a question, Paula, just quickly with that. Um, rolling off the back of that, you know, you're working with Manda. I had the pleasure of working with him at Bengaluru. You're describing a lot of things there that maybe the CEO or the technical director would have maybe have thought about trying to implement, but bringing you across as well, having, you know, worked in those sorts of roles, was it more of a combination together or when you got here, you knew straight away, this needs to change, that needs to change? Or did Manda and you come to some sort of thing? No, 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 no. You know, we've been working more than a month, Manda and me, before to arrive here. You know, it was uh, calling players, uh, trying to see where is the, what were the issues last season, not to repeat the same mistakes. And there's a fluent communication between Manda and me every single day, many times, even in, late in the night, talking and preparing and uh, not only that also choosing the players uh, you know before bringing one player we need to see many many games and everybody is, is, is together saying hey uh, we go for it not only as a good player but we, we're looking for as a good person uh, giving priority to to players from the region that was hard work you know to it in very very short time to arrive at this time we say okay we start to have slowly the team Coach, you know, great news. Parthip Gogoi tied down for a few more years. Now the question is this. Was this a reward for Parthib for the first three or four games and a little bit of last season and the Duran Cup as well? Or was this always in the works, uh, this deal? No, it was, it was from the beginning. It was from the beginning. One of the, 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 the aim of, of the management of the club is to, to, to preserve the young players, the, the the region players, and the good players, you know, to to build uh, to build the, the team, and Parthib is is one of the most important players we have. Uh, that was before to start in the Rank Cup. That was the aim, and and uh, uh, time showed us that we we are right. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I just want to flick back to what we've seen on your your social media, coach, and correct me if I'm wrong. Um, there was a picture of your your father. Um, and it looks as though you, you've recently lost him, so commiserations for that. Um, yeah. He was wearing a military outfit. Uh, you know, was he in the army? What sort of examples did he set for you as a person growing up? Well, uh, this is one the most important thing he, he teach us. That's uh, uh, the honour, the loyalty to, to what you're doing. He was a general in the army, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, for us, it's very important, the, the, the word you give, the, frankly talking, uh, honor your words, honor your work, uh, you know, love what you're doing. And uh, first, your team, your group, you give your life for them. And that's the most important thing. And that's what you try to, to put on our players, you know, to feel that uh, we belong to a family, we belong to Northeast, and we must be loyal to, 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 to our team, to our club and to, to honor our work. Right. Coach, you know, in, in India also, you, we have friends. Uh, we call them army kids. That's that's the term we use for uh, people yeah. who grew up. Grew up a, yeah, army kids. And and you're an army kid. Army kid, yeah. <laughs> and, and, I'm a son of, of, of a general and grandson of another general. You know, I come from a very military wow. family, yeah. So was there ever, did you really have to convince people in the family that you're going to enter... Uh, the other battle, the sporting battle side of things. What was your childhood like? Were you, were you disciplined? Were you, 
And, and, and are you a disciplinarian as a coach? Because every time we no. see you, uh, uh, I want to hug you. You have that kind of personality. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Thank you. No. So, so, so give us a bit of insight into your methods as well. No. Uh, thanks. Thanks God, I have a very, very good staff with me also. Um, uh, at home, I'm a disaster. You know what I mean? Uh, I think till, <laughs> till I came here, I didn't know my, all my life. I don't know how to put a washing machine. You know, <laughs> it's that kind of thing. I'm a disaster. I can cook, but I never wash dishes and <laughs> stuff like that. I need the people around me, you know, and I have a great staff with me and helping me in everything. But uh, our childhood was was uh, fantastic. You know, we had a lot of people working at home. And my mother was the to be the, the, the strong and the disciplined one, you know. My father was a, a piece of bread, a piece of sugar, you know. And I wanted to be a military, but he did everything that I know cannot be a military. And uh, uh, I was playing football. I started in the, in the club to play at 14 years old. It was late, but uh, I became professional. But I stopped with 22 years old because we had I had a bad injury in my on the both knees. And at 24, I became a coach. And I was lucky to meet uh, people like Arrigo Saki. And I started working with him in Atletico Madrid and then then uh, Claudio Ranieri. And after that, uh, I flew alone. I had the chance uh, that the president of the football station in Morocco was uh, a military. He knew my father. And I just took a flight, go to Morocco, uh, talk to him. And he introduced me a president of a team of uh, First division team and become professional coach with 25 years old. That's uh, that's a real story, you know. Yeah, I mean, even even looking at the the last season <clears throat> for the northeast coach uh, and multiple seasons actually, they they chopped and changed with their idea of what the club needed, and they got it wrong on every front. Like last year, Vincenzo Nisi, um, he had lots of tactical ideas. And he was so positive in the media, just trying to get the boys fired up somehow. Um, but it wasn't what they needed. They needed somebody to be a big, strong character. And yeah, without getting yeah. carried away, we, everyone thinks that's what you're providing. Um, is, is that what the club really needed? Was somebody that could just be a mentor, be a, almost a father figure? You know, I always believe the, the carrots and the stick. You know what I mean? In one way you give the carrot, other the other way you give you have the stick. You know, uh, try to keep everyone motivated, keep everyone awake, uh, everyone on the road. You know, knowing what we what we want. And the most important thing is that the group is a team. Anyone who uh, like the mushroom, anyone who <laughs> who take his head up, you know, you just cut it. And that's that's uh, when you do the example and you be honest with everyone. That's clear message to everyone that's what we're looking for there's no difference between a veteran and the young one uh, when they see they're honest everybody keep in the in the way you know uh, no lies being clear working hard and uh, the result will come and be patient that's the most important thing that's the, the real point you know it's interesting how you mention everybody has to be one and you know has to work hard for each other and Eric and I were discussing, and even during the game, your main striker, uh, Nestor, and how he is absolutely, he's selfless. You know, we, we want strikers to be selfish sometimes, but he's selfless in a smart way where he has no problems being, not being in the spotlight. He's okay playing the other runners around him. He's playing Parthib in, he's playing a Falguni in, he's asking others to do the running for him a little bit. Is that on purpose? Like when you went out for a striker, is one of his duties not just to score goals, but also to bring other more agile players around him into the game? Yeah, well, this is what we, we, we try to implement. And we, when you're looking for, for players, for foreign players, we need the players to be an example, you know, for, for to be to be honest on the game and to, be, to, to help the others, not to not come in here to be the star or to be... Uh, to get the medals because you can get the medals but if the team doesn't work those medals is for nothing you know that's uh, and and Nestor thanks God he's, he's very uh, very keen of that he he likes to be part 
And that's also the work outside the field that makes uh, the, the, the family, when they go inside, uh, they don't think for, for, for themselves, they, they think for the team. And that's important. Coach, I think everyone's getting very excited, including us in the studio doing the commentary about seeing a northeast side that's just revamped. But we, we can't get carried away. I'm sure you're not getting too carried away. But in the next couple of years, does this club have what it takes to go and beat a Mohan Bagan, a Mumbai City to, you know, get silverware? If, if it goes in the same way, with the same mentality, with the same hunger, that's the most important thing, you know. Uh, I think uh, in the two years they will be playing uh, the finals of, of playoffs. Uh, the thing is not to to to, to burn the, the the steps, you know. Just don't try to go to the fourth step before to do the first one. Mm. It's like when you need to score three goals, you're thinking about the third goal, and if we got the first goal, mm. uh, you know, we need to go step by step. And uh, I think the. The club is doing very well in this moment. It's, it's building slowly, slowly. Now they start thinking about the, the, the first team and the reserve team. Uh, and, and, and thinking, we, we already start to think about next season. And that's, that's very important. Coach, let's just go back to um, some of your inspirations as well. Um, uh, there's a picture with Jürgen Klopp that you have on your Instagram. And yeah. you also, on your Twitter, you've posted some, reposted some, uh, managers having, uh, uh, you know, dinner somewhere, and, and you do keep an eye on what's happening in the managerial world. But who are your? You mentioned Arrigo Saki, you mentioned Ranieri, but who are your managerial slash coaching inspirations? Oh, uh, you know, uh, I had the luck to 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 to, to live in a in a time with Arrigo Saki, Johan Cruyff, uh, Rafa Benitez, Jurgen Klopp. Uh, you know, I cannot say this one or that one, you know, from each one we try to pick a little, some ideas and every day watching football and reading a lot and watching trainings and everything, you try to, 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 to pick some ideas to implement, not to copy, of course, because we don't have the same players, same style or same mentality, of course, but we try to, to implement some ideas, some different ways. I think uh, a mixture of uh, of Klopp, uh, we can say, a mixture of Klopp and Arrigo, a little bit, uh, and, and even Claudio Ranieri in his transitions. This is what I like. Oh, so, so a lot of uh, rock and roll football in there with a lot of uh, uh, organization. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hard rock and roll. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. <laughs> you know, no, no risk, no fun. <laughs> Um, a lot of managers have, have idiosyncrasies. They have certain things that they're very fussy about. This has to be this way. This has to be this way. Uh, are you fussy about something in football and in life? Not really. You know, maybe some years ago, yes, but not anymore. Uh, I like to, 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 to be, I like organization in the field, but at the same time, I like to give freedom to the player to, 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 to show himself, you know what I mean? To, I love the players who, who one v one very well, shooting, finishing, moving. I like fast players. That's very important for me. But no, we cannot say I'm very strict in something. I like only that or that. Not really. I like fun. And and just with that, you know, we talk about connection as well with the the people of the northeast. And again, last couple of years have been great. Blah blah blah. But getting them back to the stadium, that's the, the big draw card. Um, you know, you're doing that with putting results on the pitch. That's the only way to get fans to come back. How is the club engaging a bit more with the Northeast region? Because there has been a big disconnect in the past. Well, uh, in this moment, there's a ha very hard work to going on. Uh, I think there is an agreement with Shilong also that uh, we're building an academy there. And I think in, in, in January or February, there will be two games, trying to play two games in Shillong. You know, uh, we'll be trying to do some, some yeah, yeah, uh, doing some training and other cities. Uh, slowly, slowly this season, but next season will be very important to, to try to do games, uh, pre-season tournaments uh, all around and building academies. Yesterday was a signature with the Guwahati Sport Association 
to start uh, tournaments and academies here in Guwahati. And uh, it's uh, Madar is working with, with all the team for all the regions to start one academy in each region just starting. And that's very important, you know, to, 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 to make people uh, feel that this is their team. This is uh, North, real Northeast team. And uh, of course, the problem in football, you know how it is. You win, uh, everybody comes, everybody will say in Spanish that when the plate is full, everybody's angry. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you win, everybody wants to be in and share. But we need our, our fans, we need our supporters, not only because we're winning. Don't love us because we win. Love us because we are Northeast. We are the same team. We are the, in the same boat. That's the most important thing. We need our supporters in, the, in this moment to push us, you know, to feel that we are loved and we will give more. That's the most important. Because when managements appear or supporters appear only when you're winning, you will feel bad. You say, oh, you see, now we're winning. This is when they're coming. We want them when every day, every single day. Right. Beautiful. Right. Um, we'll let you go, Coach, very soon. I have one. Unless, Eric, do you have anything that springs no, to your mind? That was okay. that was it for me. Just, just the last one, Coach. And uh, obviously, this probably has something with you growing up in Africa. Um, you really like lions. Uh, you have a lot of posts with lions and I think it comes with a lot of that honor, the whole military background, all of that in Africa. But is there a story attached? Have you had a close encounter with one? Or, or do you no, just, since, yeah. since I was very, very young, hmm. since I was very young, they, they used to call me the lion of the Sahara. Oh. And it stays like this. And many, many people compare me to lions. Sometimes I'm very lonely very alone just uh, away from everybody but sometimes i just need to be with with a lot and uh, uh the honor the loyalty the perseverance you know persistence to be again and again and again i don't put my arms down i think it's one of the, the points is why they call it lion but here in guwahati uh we're more as a wolf pack yeah. you know we are the, the highlanders and uh, we're putting in the mind of the players that we need to go hunting for our families, for our fans, for our team. Uh, we are the wolves, and I think it's another animal very, very important uh, to make that group and that family. That's that's really nice. Uh, I think a wolf pack with a lion at the head of it would would. Uh, you, we can see why it's so entertaining. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Good picture. <laughs> just just um, was it a conscious decision to start uh, wearing the red kit more often than the white kit? Mm. Uh, that's not a question for me. <laughs> you know, I'm not. Uh, I think it the, the red kit, the, the season they they played with the red kit mm. was a very good season, yeah. and uh, they want to come back to that uh, to, to that uh, time. I think it's a nice color. I love it. Liverpool. <laughs> so that, ladies and gentlemen, was Juan Pedro Benali, the new man in charge of Northeast United and it's been a very positive electric start as well. We wish him all the best into taking Northeast back which is in the top five or six teams of the ISL. Thanks for listening and uh, we will keep coming up with more episodes through the course of the season. This is Off The Pitch.